In the class about factories, I mentioned that the T factory dominates in the shallow waters and the M factory is more common in the deeper water. That's because the M fact factory tends to be outcompeted by the T factory in shallow water where there is good light penetration. But in the Paleozoic, and certainly in the Neoproterozoic, which are the rocks around me, this was not the case. And in the Neoproterozoic, you had no Photozoan organism, I mean skeletal organism, so the T factory did not exist. And in the Paleozoic, the M factory seemed to be more competitive against the T factory. So we can find examples of shallow water M factories. And here's an example of a, a diagram of how this would look. You would have lots of mud and the core microbial facies on the top of the shelf. And then you'd have steep sided geometries with well-developed um, flanks where you would have transported sediments. And this would all be an M factory. Notice that this looks incredibly like a T factory. And in fact, for all intents and purposes, it is. It behaves exactly like the T factory. So the M factory and the T factory, in terms of uh, response to sea level changes, are very similar. So much so that if you look at the Canning Basin in Australia, which dates from the Frasnian to Faminian, you see that we have multiple systems here that uh, comprise a reef, that's the hashed uh, texture there. Uh, so the platform margin is a reef, but also a platform and a slope. And here you have a mix of um, T and M factory. So essentially in the Frasnian, which is the older sequence, we have T factory. And in the Faminian, the younger sequence, we have M factory. And their geometry is completely undistinguishable. Despite the fact that they are completely different factories, you cannot tell them apart on seismic or at outcrop without looking at the rocks. So that's clear indication that the M factory and the T factory are very sim similar to their response to base level change in part probably because the producers on the M factory, if it's a shallow water, continentally attached system, are uh, photozoan as well. So here I'm surrounded by shallow water M factory. It's called the Bua Formation of Oman, and a lot of people come from all around the world to study it because it's a world-class example of, uh, of this type of deposit. So let's have a look at this Bua formation. Let's start with where it was deposited. Let's have a look at the paleogeography of this deposit. In the Neoproterozoic, the Arabian continent was essentially covered by a large shallow water sea, and that's where the, the Neoproterozoic limestone were deposited. So again, shallow water tropical seas, even in the Neoproterozoic, were ideal for deposition of carbonates. And these carbonates are quite different because they don't have skeletons, but what's interesting is if you look at the positional model for the, those carbonates, they're very similar to a modern carbonate ramp, to what we saw in the Middle East today. So we have a barrier here in the mid-ramp that can break the energy of the wave, and so we can distinguish the mid-ramp, outer ramp, and the inner ramp, and they're very similar in terms of their, their scale and their um, deposition. There are massive differences, of course, because we don't have any skeletal fragments, so we don't have any corals or sponge or anything like this. But what we do have are giant stromatolites and a lot of different grains. So at the outcrop, we can see, for instance, that we have ooids. This is cross-bedded ooids that we see here around us in the Bua Formation. And yeah, you can see the cross certification. If you take a lens to it, you can see the ooid. So we'd, we have those non-skeletal carbonate grains. We also have evidence for these giant stromatolites. So that's part of a stromatolite. I will highlight it for you so you can see it better. So these can be very large. This one is only about a meter or two up, um, in diameter, but some of them could be 20 meter in diameter. So it was really the era of algae and microbes. They could grow to considerable sizes. There was no grazing taking place or very little grazing taking place. So they dominated that carbonate assemblage. So you can see carbonates date back from at least the Neoproterozoic, if not older. 
And if we go down on the outer ramp, then we start to see evidence for mass transport deposit. And here's an example where you can clearly see fragment here. So those are intra-class of limestone that were transported on the, the flank. So even though we don't have skeletal material, we do have very grainy material and we can apply the Dunham texture to these carbonates. And that's another example of a much larger class that was transported on the slope of that Bua ramp. In the subsurface, you can actually see the Bua and it's present in, in, uh, in the subsurface. And there's also a deeper a neo limestone known as the Kufai formation that also, um, that also predates the Bua formation. So we have several intervals of uh, deposition of carbonate in the Neoproterozoic of Oman. And the point I want to make is you can even recognize clinoforms on seismic. So really this system behaves just like a tea factory. It prograds into the basin during the HST. If we look at the sequence stratigraphy of the Bua formation, we can see that during the HST, we have aggradation and progradation. So really the, the sequence stratigraphic response of a system like this one will be very similar to the sequence stratigraphic response of a modern tea factory with the caveat that you always have to take into account the ecology of the organisms you are studying. Now, those Neoproterozoic limestones can be important in terms of reservoirs. In the subsurface of uh, Oman, you have a Neoproterozoic salt or an infra-Cambrian salt known as the Ara salt. So it, it comes above those Neoproterozoic limestone. And what happened is the, the carbonates were deposited closely with the soil, closely associated with the soil, and some of them actually broke during halokinesis and were entrained in the motion of the salt. And you end up with the so-called stringers within the aerosol. So those are little cases of carbonates, several kilometer in uh, diameter, so, so relatively large blocks. And the interesting thing is they were charged with petroleum. So you can actually produce from those stringers. And this is one of the plays of Oman is the Neoproterozoic limestone, as you can see here. So some of the wells target those Neoproterozoic limestone, which are, you know, a, a bit younger. They are actually ara age. They're not uh, the, exactly the same age as the Bua formation, but very, very similar and grew into the salt. So that's a very complex play, but it's one nevertheless that you need to keep in mind if you are in a similar situation in a basin somewhere. So that brings me to my conclusion. We saw that we have deep microbial mounds in the M factory. Those are below wave base, so they're not limited by accommodation. In the Paleozoic and older formation, it's possible to have platforms of M factory. We've seen a beautiful, beautiful example here in Oman. And the platform geometry and the sequence stratigraphy of the M factory are going to be very similar to the T factory. So in our next class, which is the last class of this second theme, we will address the problem of the C factory and its sequence stratigraphy. <laughs>